Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio and welcome to a new lease of life. We have made some decisions. Uh, this is episode three uh, of the build series and I think it's gonna be the last episode. It might be episode 3.1, look in the title to find out. Burn it. Ah, <laughs> yay! This started out as a challenge for me to build a guitar in 250 minutes. I blew past that time frame and my uh, required blood sugar uh, levels in one morning uh, two weeks ago now. It's been a little bit crazy with the great guitar build off, which is still going on, by the way. You can check out the uh, the ancillary competition, which is heating up and amazing. But the realization was that, quite frankly, these timed challenges do nothing. It might be somewhat interesting to watch, but there's very little actual teaching going on. And if there's one thing that I learned through the, the main Great Guitar Wheel of Competition, it was that I really want to be helpful. I want to be teaching. I want to be doing tutorials. I want to have my channel as well as as well as entertaining people I wanted to teach. So actually, you're gonna be seeing some changes on the channel moving forward, um, for the better, I hope. The long and short of it is that I rushed, and rushing is not good. And I often say, don't, you know, don't take the last 5% of, of the job for granted, because that's the most important bit. And, you know, I wired a skull to the headstock in a very rough fashion. And as I was doing it, I was thinking, uh, and so did you in the comments. Um, in fact, somebody typed exactly that. Quick, go and type exactly that. Um, yeah. Anyway, I am not rushing. We are going to try and finish it in this video, but we're there. So the skull comes off. The headstock needs to be fixed. We'll do that in a little while. I have applied four coats of high build guitar finishing oil over the last um, a couple of weeks uh, as and when I've been in here playing around. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do the last little bit of that to start with, which is rubbing it down with 2000 grit wet and dry paper and applying one final coat of oil and then just a little bit of Renaissance wax. Okay, so this hangs up to cure for a little while. That has been rubbed back to almost touch dry. You can tell that something's just gone on, but it's not coming off on your hands. Onto the neck. Those holes are somewhat embarrassing. Okay, off you come. This is a really cool little tool. And here we are back to life. That really looks very not nice. Back to the stains. Now I am not going to match the body. That is uh, it's not likely to match perfectly, and uh, I want to have the headstock and the back plate contrast. First things first, I need to make some dowels to fill those horrible holes. Uh, that's still there. Maple. <laughs> Isotunes. These things are cool. Now, if I wanted perfection, I would be doing this on the lathe or using a draw plate even. Uh, draw plates are cool. It's a, you know, you've got a piece of steel uh, with various different size holes going down and you basically pull your piece of wood through, uh, pull it through or push it through and it takes the corners off and it makes a round piece of wood which is uh, pretty freaking cool.
Also fun. Um, <laughs> turns out I'm doing it this way then, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the grain on this isn't good enough. Uh, it's the wrong, it's the wrong grain orientation. Uh, anyway, so uh, because of what I'm going to do next, I don't necessarily need perfect. I'm just going to roughly chop uh, something that fills it, and I'll be able to hammer it in. Technically, this is for acoustic guitar building, etc., but it works really well here. Check out crimsonguitars.com. So not going for perfectly rounded holes has resulted in a few spots where I need to fill, but uh, sanding it back, dust, bit of glue, and we're sorted. That is not unattractive. The front was a bit better though. Amber, water-based stain as a base. And you apply it going from the middle towards the out side, towards the out. I have sort of skipped a step here. We're going to pretend that I haven't. And we're going to say that, yes, putting the stain on before I inlay the skull in was planned because, um, well, it'll make it easier to see where my lines, my scribe lines are. There we go. Basically, this amber stain, Crimson Guitar's finest, is, is kind of like an engineer's blue in this, uh, in this instance and was entirely planned and not another mistake by Ben, who's currently thinking of his lunch instead of his guitar. Poop. So the plan is black, brown, blue. Spirit-based stains. Uh, I'm doing a similar sort of effect to what's on the top, mottled and natural-ish looking. Front and back, it's going to look like a veneer. And uh, yeah, a particularly fine veneer at that. Or it's going to fail utterly. We'll see. Start with the brown. No! Wait, wait, wait. Let's sort out this skull. And then I'll do that. All right, so I'm going to have it in the same place. And that'll be fine. It hasn't made it easier to see at all. Well, that works. It's a lot more elegant than the, than the first solution. Um, I'm now going to semi-camouflage it, really. It's not going to be quite as obvious. Um, it's almost going to look like, like the skull is growing out of, uh, or being, it's being subsumed into the guitar itself. Rock and roll will take your soul.
What do you think? I'm really happy with this, actually. Pretty dark. Um, you can actually still see the skull. I do have a little bit of tidying up to do, though, because uh, I stopped. I stopped concentrating. That sticks in very nicely. Well, I stopped concentrating, so tidy up the edges. Penetrating guitar finishing oil. This is my favorite bit. Now, before I glue the skull in, I am going to just clean the bottom up. Just scraping it out with the uh, inlet chisel should do the job perfectly well. And the spirit-based stains don't get picked up by the oil, which is great. Let's go, let's just go. Very much. And because those weren't perfectly square, they look sort of natural-ish. So once you've got your initial coat of uh, penetrating guitar finishing oil in and you're happy that the wood has soaked up as much as it's going to, uh, move on to, to the high build, which has just got a whole hell of a lot more solids in it, basically. I sound like a doctor talking about high fiber diets or something. I should have gloves on, shouldn't I? I really should. That needs to sit for depending on how warm it is, 10, 15 minutes maybe, till it starts to go tacky. And I'm gonna rub all of the excess away till it's almost touch dry and then leave it for, um, basically a day really is best for it to cure. So the next day, everything is cured and we're good to go. Now I've got some microcrystalline wax. Uh, Crimson produced this for a little while, but uh, um, yeah, we don't do it at the moment fumes, lots of fumes when you're making wax. You can go in, uh, Renaissance wax is one of my favorites actually, and just, it's it's a relatively quick and easy process to apply this stuff. It's nice and soft and it works very well. There is another method that uh, works even better, and that is to use El Hot Air Gunner. Uh, warm up the rag or tissue or whatever you're applying your wax with. And this works in particular even better with hard waxes, sort of Karanuba beeswax mixes, etc. cetera. Um, but if you warm up your rag, then it goes on better with a better shine and the, the whole thing just buffs up easier. It's, it's, it's great. Just don't burn your fingers. If you can help it. And don't be tempted to heat up the guitar itself because, you know, not ideal. You don't have to use wax. I'm shouting, I'm not, this, this yeah. You don't have to use wax uh, over a guitar finishing oil, but uh, yeah. And I don't even half the time. But today, I am. So there we go. Gosh darn it, I like this finish. It's pretty dang cool. We have a neck, it's all nice and shiny. Uh, the back of the headstock is, is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, there we go. I normally engrave my sort of sigil into the back of a headstock. But I think I'm gonna do it on the front of this one this time, just for, just for fun. Pentel Graph Gear 2000, I think. I love these pencils. Crimson Guitars Clamping Calls, yay. Okay, there we go.
Perfect. I am quite happy with that. Potentially, I could have put uh, brass in there, but I like the uh, the contrast. That is so cool. I think I need to go and get a couple more of these from Gothic. I really like that. We are nearly at the end of this video. Uh, yes, this is going to turn into a four episode series because I am, I'm not rushing. Uh, but before I get there, let's sort these things out. You will remember that I, I carved most of the material away in that one and left a little bit more in here. So when I, when I heated the ring, it pushed a lot more plastic away. So I need to tidy these up. That's my last job of the day. my goggles. So, yep. <laughs> I wonder, actually. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I doubt the watchmaker who used these last would have ever considered what I'm using these for. I'm gonna have to uh, modify that. Feel more fire coming on. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was essentially just flame polishing uh, those excess bits. Uh, it's still not perfect, but what it looks like is uh, that somebody stuffed a ring onto a piece of plastic. And that's not far off what I wanted it to look like. So, yeah. I need to sort out the inside of that. That's still a little bit warm. This is very, very important. Please subscribe. Uh, a lot of you watch all of these videos and aren't subscribed, and it's, you know, um, just, just a little bit hurtful, but it's fine. We're okay. We're, it's, it's cool. Uh, now, one more video, and in the next video, I'm going to put this whole guitar together, wire it up, and it's going to be, there's, there's going to be some actual talk about wiring. Uh, I'm not an expert, but I'll show you what I know. Uh, the hardware, the strings, etc. And I will play it and then we will be done and we will be moving on to a build where I build a guitar from scratch. Uh, the most important thing is we are giving this guitar away. It is a gift. It's going to somebody who is subscribed to Crimson Guitars Extras, a side channel that we are going to be making some content for. And uh, yeah, we want to see you over there. So in the next episode, I'm giving the guitar away. Somebody will find out that they have this, which is pretty cool, I think. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, yada yada. Cheers.